The Nile River, longest in the world, stretches over 4,200 miles down the eastern coast of Africa. Phrased by Martin Dugard in The Explorers, this mighty flow becomes something known as the White Nile, then merges with the second and completely different river known as the Blue Nile near Khartoum, in what is now Sudan. At that point it is merely the Nile, which it remains until it rushes into the Mediterranean Sea, discharging 300 million cubic meters of water per day. The Nile River is home to expansive wildlife, both dangerous and fascinating. Natural wonders, such as the falls at Lake Victoria and the Nile itself, and natural secrets hidden from the eyes of outsiders. The greatest secret of them all, the southern source of the Nile, would be shrouded in mystery for thousands of years, until two great explorers, Richard Burton and John Speck, came together to unlock this mystery for Britain and for the rest of the world. Africa would no longer be a continent hidden in uncertainty. John Hanning Speck was born in the summer of 1827 in the quaint and rural village of Buckland Brewer in England. Richard Francis Burton was born in the spring of 1821, six years earlier, in the significantly larger city of Torquay. From the very beginning of their lives, they were quite different people, magnetic opposites, as some would say. John Speck was known to keep to himself. In the novel The Explorers by Martin Dugard, it is mentioned that Speck was a loner who performed poorly in school and stumbled with the social graces. Conversely, Richard Burton was a renowned geographer, writer, translator, orientalist, soldier, ethnologist, cartographer, linguist, poet, spy, fencer, diplomat, and explorer. He was a man of many talents. Burton was said to have snuck into Mecca, disguised as an Arab pilgrim, where only Arabs were allowed. There he was able to gain intelligence for Britain about the city and escape with his life. It was well known that non-Arabs caught in Mecca would be captured and would receive harsh punishment, even death. By the words of History Today magazine, compared with the brilliant and wildly unconventional Burton, Speck seemed a plotter. The two men's journeys began in 1856 when they were hired by the Royal Geographic Society to make an exploration in search of the source of the Nile. It was a well-known fact by the Society and its members that for 58 years between 1798 and 1856, many explorers had tried to find the source. None were successful. The British people wanted desperately to be the first to find this source, for several reasons. It was that the continent of Africa was largely open for England to use, as it was needed to harvest natural resources. Another reason was that powerful countries before them, such as Rome and Greece, had failed to find this source. Britain succeeding where so many others had failed would prove English power and bring fame to their country. The source's mystery and mystique eventually became legend. The 18th century French author Montesquieu claimed a reason for the lack of finding the source. He once said, It is not given to us mortals to see the Nile feeble and at its source. The explorers would know equal fame, so Speck and Burton were honored to have this opportunity. To keep the findings of this mission a secret, the search was under the guise of finding the Sea of Ujiji. On the eve of the 1856 journey into Africa with Speck, Burton said, Of the gladdest moments in life, methinks, is the departure upon a distant journey into an unknown land. The two arrive at Zanzibar, an island city in Tanzania, on the 20th of December, 1856, the home base for their journey into Africa. Leaving the coast, the group then moved inland onto a well-worn slave trade route, leading inward 745 miles to Ujiji, where Burton planned to travel on foot with a caravan of native porters. On February 14th of 1858, over a year later, Burton seized a first glimpse of Ujiji and the shores of Lake Tanganyika. It is now known to be the longest lake on earth. Burton was the first foreign man ever to lay eyes on those waters. Speck had earlier lost his vision after long days of intense glare from the sun. The great lake in question was nothing but mist and glare to my eyes, said Speck. The lovely Tanganyika Lake could be seen in all its glory by everybody but myself. His sight gradually returned after many days of healing at Ujiji. Burton was convinced that the lake he had just discovered, Lake Tanganyika, was the source of the Nile. He presumed that the river flowed north and exited the lake. This was its southernmost reach. Burton was anxious to return to England and share his findings with the Royal Geographic Society. But Speck was not convinced. And so it was on their return trip to the coast, Speck broke off from Burton and his group at Kaze, modern-day Tabora, in Tanzania. 
Leaving north with a 34-man caravan on July 9, 1858, Speck traveled for three weeks. He simply kept walking farther and farther north, hoping that reports of a great lake were true. They were. On August 3rd, Speck discovers Lake Victoria. He is convinced that this is the source. Speck later wrote, I no longer had any doubt that the lake at my feet gave birth to that interesting river, the source of which had been the subject of so much speculation and the object of so many explorers. This was correct, but not believed at the time. Speck returns to England in May of 1859 before Burton and announces his claim. He is sent back to Africa in September of 1860 to prove his claim. There were difficulties because the expedition's two interpreters quarreled, which, which complicated the negotiations with the local rulers through whose territories the expeditions had to pass and with the Arab traders from whom it needed supplies. The expedition finally reached Gondokoro, a town on the White Nile in South Sudan, in February of 1862, after many delays. Speck then traveled south to the place where the White Nile flowed from Lake Victoria, which he named Ripon Falls, on July 28, 1862. Speck is now at the age of 35. He didn't follow the Nile stream northwards as closely as he could, which made doubters question whether this really was the Nile. John Speck published a book in December of 1863 titled Journal of the Discovery of the Source of the Nile. The book had been badly edited and appeared both inaccurate and disagreeably boastful. Burton was still refusing to admit that Speck had found the source. Because of this disagreement, a debate between them was scheduled at the British Association from September 16, 1864, to decide which claim, Speck's of Lake Victoria or Burton's of Lake Tanganyika, was correct. The day before the debate, Speck traveled to Corsham, Wiltshire, to shoot partridges. Hunting was decidedly Speck's natural element. He had mentioned that he felt most at peace and relaxed while hunting. And so it was that he decided to hunt before the debate to relieve stress from an obviously anxious time. If Speck won the debate, he would become famous, popular, and wealthy. If Speck lost, he would be ignored, even scorned for telling lies to the British Association and convincing the public of false truths. He was climbing over a wall scarcely three feet tall with a Lancaster shotgun under his arm. He puts his hand atop the smooth rocks to brace himself, even as the weight of his body presses down hard on the 22-inch Damascus steel barrels. John Speck died on September 15, 1864. His death was probably an accident, but word spread that he had committed suicide because he was too scared to face Burton in debate. Speck was 37. Richard Burton was credited the next day as the discoverer of the source of the Nile. This gained him immense popularity and incredible wealth. He continued to explore and lived at the age of 69. He died on October 20, 1890 in Trieste, Italy. It was not until 1871 that Lake Victoria was accepted as the correct source of the Nile. The discoveries Burton and Speck made on their journeys into Africa expanded the geographic knowledge of the European world leading eventually to the colonization of the East African region and for the extraction of natural resources from African land to be used in the production of British goods, which were then sold to other areas and used by other countries, further expanding the reaches of the European economy. The discovery of the source of the Nile led to greater knowledge of the African continent for the rest of the world.